Good night to all, Geta. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Teresa. Well, I hope you've had an amazing weekend. Well, still in the state of emergency, I would really encourage everyone to stay indoors, practice cleanliness, always wash your hands, preparing food. When it comes to anything at all, always practice cleanliness and be mindful of your well-being. While speaking of preparing food, we have another delightful recipe and it is by Chef Ruth. Enjoy. Hi viewers, I'm Chef Ruth. I'll be, I'll be doing a lemon garlic butter prawns. These are the ingredients, prawns, potato, cherry tomato, egg, olives, broccoli, snake bean, garlic butter, lemon, and these are local parsley, lettuce, vinaigrette dressing. Firstly, we're gonna cook the garlic prawn on the grill. Okay, the garlic prawn will take about 10 minutes, so when the garlic prawn is cooking, we'll boil the eggs. The water is already boiling. Uh, eggs is gonna take seven minutes. So I'll just put the eggs in now. Okay, while the egg is cooking, we'll cook off, blanch off the bean and the broccoli. At the same time, we'll blanch the beans and the broccoli. So while it's cooking, we check the prawns. While the prawn is cooking, I'll just do up the salad. We'll cut the cherry tomatoes first. Okay, I'll cut the lettuce. Okay, while they're ready, we'll just wait for the prawns to get cooked and the egg. Okay, the bean and the broccoli are ready, so we'll remove it and pull it down. I'm cooling it in the ice water, so it gives you a green color. Okay, prawns are ready now. I'll just get rid of the egg and then we're ready to serve. I'll grab the egg now. I'll just peel one egg and see if it's done. When the prawns are cooked, you, it will give you a orange color. Nice orange color and it's, you'll see it's cooked. And you can clearly see it's because it's not thick. So that's the egg. Those are the 
prawns. Okay. Okay, we will plate the lettuce first. So the lettuce and then put the cherry tomatoes. And then you put the broccoli and the bean. Then you have the potatoes. Then we have the egg. We cut the egg into wedges. and put some olives. Then you put the uh, prawns on top. Okay, this is the dressing. It's two tablespoons of uh, red wine vinegar and eight tablespoons olive oil and a pinch of salt. Just get a tablespoon and sprinkle it on top. And last but not least, you put the lemon on. There is, these are the local parsley. You can get it from the local markets. And this is our finished product, lemon garlic butter prawn salad. It's easy, simple. You can have it, do it for lunch or dinner. Thank you for watching How's the Norm. We'll see you next time. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, Chef Root, for that. Well, you can add this to your favorite list of recipes and whip up a storm in the comfort of your home. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we've got more coming up. Welcome back. With the pandemic disease that is still affecting a lot of lives and taking away thousands and thousands of lives, it is very important and safe to stay indoors. Well, moving forward, we have for you health and wellness. This time, Dr. Ambi talks to us about disaster and trauma, how you can cope with it. Hi viewers, welcome to our Healthy Mind Show. I'm sure that it's been a wonderful time to get back and to learn many things about mental health where we can stay mentally healthy to look after ourselves. Today I'm sure the viewers will understand there is a very important topic that you and I can learn more and over this Healthy Mind Show. It's all about the topic is how can we cope in a disaster and a trauma. So in order to know that how you can cope, and it's important for us to know that the responses, what are the common responses? How do we react when there is a trauma, when there is a disaster? And I'm sure the disaster is, can be man-made or it can be also uh, comes from a human-made disasters or trauma.
and there are many courses. We are not talking about the courses today, but one thing you may understand is also if disaster comes, there is always an emotional reaction. What happens? There is a normal reaction a hu normal human being goes through for an un... Uh, it's a, what will I say? It's a basically an abnormal event. So it's a normal reaction to an abnormal event. Many times you may be thinking that we are going crazy. I want to assure you we are not going crazy. We know that we can sort this problem. We can know how to cope with that. So you will understand as a people, as a, your relatives or whoever is around you will not understand what are you going through with this disaster or you're going through a trauma. So we want to understand what are the normal reactions we can come. Number one, there will be an emotional reaction, there will be a physical reaction, there will be a reactions in your thinking, and there will be a reaction on your behavior. So also, suppose you have a disaster side, then you know how to cope with this disaster or when you go through trauma. Number one, also a little emotional, but you look in also you have shock, you will be fearful and you will be anger and you can be even sad that what has happened to you. So shock because you don't disbelieve this has happened to you and you're also very fearful and you will get very angry why it has happened or why is it happening to you and you can feel sad and finally you feel shame. These are emotional reactions when you go through a disaster. Number two is the physical. That means people do go through sleep issues, that they may not go to sleep, they may get up, or same uh, dreams and things on, and physical problems. So when you talk about physical, you get every little noise, you get very worried, upset, general agitation, agitated or cross, or muscle getting tightened, palpitation, breathing difficulties, headaches and nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, this la kind and many of the physical symptoms which can be changed to cultural. Of course thinking get affected. You can have bad memories about what has happened to you, what are the disasters or the thoughts, images, they can have all these problems comes back to you. You can have dreams which is not very pleasant to you. Of course there might be confusion because it's your thinking, you are repeatedly thinking about what has happened. Well, I have to also think that behavior is very important because what happens in the behavior, you are going to, you don't know how to cope with that, so you will have social withdrawal and the societally you can get irritated with the people and feeling detachment from others and also loss of interest to the activities. Of course, it can affect your work because you're not wanting to go to work, you won't feel motivated, poor concentration and attention. Obviously, finally, your habits might change. That means you want to drink alcohol or looking for uh, drugs to, or cigarettes or buai or this la kind law to, uh, to cope with this. These are not right, but I'm saying these are some of the habits which can come. So you understand the normal reaction to the abnormal event, which is our old common, and it's not, you're not going crazy. Well, these signs and symptoms describe whatever I have told you. I want to understand talking to people, trustworthy people, talk more about it is very important. And if there is a problem, whatever I have said all this time, if it's continued to more than six weeks, ask for help. And if you feel numb and you don't want to do anything, you're secluding yourself, ask for favor and ask for help. And if you have friends or families, talk about it. Don't bottle it up. Open up and talk about it. Spiritually, it's very, very important. Spiritually, you need to be in prayers. It's very important according to the faith. And also, you don't use alcohol and things. Well, if you have any concern to cope with that, always ask help. Well, viewers, I have given you a very little bit all about the reaction to an abnormal event that is disaster or trauma because I'm sure on the next time we will talk about how we can cope. Until next time, take care and God bless you all. Bye-bye now. There you have it. Thank you so much, Dr. Ambi, for helping us with such sentiments. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we've got more coming up on House and Home, so stay watching.
Welcome back everyone. Well, moving forward, we have for you another interesting color story. Well, if you hadn't known, color story is a segment where we feature very talented and skillful people who make a living out of their gifts. Here it is. My name is uh, Matthias Magi and I'm from Chimbu. And I do uh, metal fabrication and combined with brick. Actually, my dad is a, is a tradesman. So I, I was inspired by my dad. So he's, he's always there working very hard, tirelessly. And yeah, I learned from him a lot. I learned how to weld, I learned how to do things. I didn't go to school, but I just learned things from him. So yeah, I got inspired by my dad. So I came up with these things of doing my own metal work and stuff like that. And the type of materials that I use, I use um, gas bottles and um, car rims. Um, gas bottle, I do a gas stove. And um, car rims, I do a cooking stand. And I use a, a sheet of plate, metal plate, and um, round pipes and those um, steel industrial things where I do this um, metal, this cooking stand and and also I use drums, drum to make drum ovens and a roasting oven for for baking and roasting. The process of how I do is I don't do sketching. I well actually I I search internet like get some fair ideas from the internet and then I just modify these things from the internet to my own what I think is going to be okay with like the customer's view and stuff like that. So, like I said, like I get some ideas, fair ideas from internet and then I modify them and some ideas I add them myself. So yeah. And some ideas came from like my dad and some uncles there well. They, they they do this stuff for like over years. So sometimes when I do this, they came in and they said, oh, you have to do this, do this. So yeah, some ideas came from my family members and some, some mostly I think myself. Well, that was our color story for this week featuring our friend, our talented friend, Matthias Maggi, who is a metal fabricant. Well, if you want to know more about him, feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us via the contact details. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we've got more coming up on House and Home. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Well, we have pet hacks coming up, and if you are a pet lover, this one is for you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another pet guest segment. Today, I'll be doing some hacks that you can do for your pet at home using the materials that you have. It's simple and effortless. Without further ado, let's head straight into the studio and I'll show you how it's done. Want your pet to stay comfy? Why not try this? This DIY, you will need the following. A sweater, a pillow that is 12 inch or similar, and some clothes that don't fit you anymore. Firstly, insert the pillow into the sweater.
Next thing you do is sew the neck area. Then sew the closing end or the hip area. Lastly, join the sweater's hand and sew. There you have it, something simple which you can do for your pup or your kitty. Tired of seeing face over your furniture? Well, here's how you can get rid of it. You will need a rubber glove, a glue gun, and sticks. Using the glue gun, make lines of dot using the liquid. Then let it dry for a bit. Then apply it to the areas where the furs are or simply brush your kitty to remove the fur before it goes onto the furniture. Want to know how to do your very own DIY pet tent? Well, here's how you can make it. What you will need for this DIY? A empty curtain and a t-shirt. Wear the t-shirt onto the curtain Once you're done, use the safety pin and pin each side of the box. Make it comfy for your pet friend. Place a soft fabric into the box. You can use this for your kitty or your pup. Well, there you have it. Some simple tips and ideas for pet lovers some pet hacks that you can consider. Well, we'll take a quick breather. When we come back, Quick Stitch is up next. Once again to Quick Stitch, thank you so much for joining me. Now if you have been following up with all my projects, thank you so much, I really do appreciate it. Now today's project will be based on a zippered pouch. So if you want to get this project done, these are the props that you will need. So here are the list of props that I have for this project. You'll notice that I chose all the plain colors for this project. Starting off with the outside part of the bag, I have chosen plain red, which is 6 by 9.5 inches, having two pieces. 
Then I have the plain green fabric which is also 6 by 9.5 inches as the lining or the inside part of the bag also having two pieces. Then we have the strap which is 8 by 9.5 inches, a zipper, some tacking pins, a pair of scissors and an iron. Now if you need to really use an iron to help guide your sewing, please do so. But if you think you can handle your sewing without an iron, that is still okay. Step 1 is the strap. You want to start with a single strap by folding in from both sides into the center and making another fold. Then you will have to run a straight stitch all the way down. That will be on both sides of the strap. Place the strap under the press of foot and don't forget to start and finish off with a back stitch. Once you have the strap ready, move on to the next step. Step 2. Sewing the lining, body and the zipper together. Now grab your lining and place on your table with the right side facing up. Place the zipper on the lining and then the outside part of the bag and make sure the right side is facing down. Use your pins to keep the pieces together. Before we start stitching all this, here's a simple tip when zippers are involved in your sewing. Always use the zipper foot. Simply remove the presser foot and add the zipper foot like so. Now you can be able to sew all pieces together. Remove pins as you sew along and always remember to start and finish off with a back stitch. So now we have sewn all the pieces together with the zipper. Same applies to the other two pieces. Spread the pouch like so, having a pair of each pieces on both sides of the zipper. What I'm doing next is to apply the zigzag stitch to firmly hold the pieces together and that'll be on both sides. So now that we're done sewing the lining and the outside part of the bag together with the zipper, use your iron to iron up the wrinkles. This is how you do it. Place another cloth on the table and start ironing. Now this looks neat. The last thing you need to do is you're going to be applying the strap. So what you do is open the zipper right to the center and lift this up. Right sides facing each other and together with the lining. Now holding up each pieces, match the linings and the outside part of the bag. Use your pins again and pin all the sides. Start sewing from the lining from this point all around to this point as shown. Once you're done, flip the pouch right side out. Once you're done, flip the pouch right side out. Now what you want to do is open up the zipper and bring up the lining again so that you can sew. This is opening. Use a straight stitch to close it up. This is how your zippered pouch should look like. 
For more on Quick Stitch, keep watching House and Home. Well, if you're someone who loves sewing, you can try this out and yeah, test your sewing skills and see what you can do while still indoors. Well, we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we wrap up the show. Welcome back to the show. Now we have tech people coming up and this time we have the technology news. Technology news. Welcome back to the show everyone. Moving forward we have tech people to wrap up the show and this time we talk about the technology news which is the coronavirus. Here it is. Hi and welcome to this week's segment of Tech People. With the world going into lockdown because of the recent outbreak of COVID-19 or simply the coronavirus, most people at home using their phones, tablets and computers to go online or keeping themselves busy entertained by playing on their gaming console. In this segment of Tech People, I will go through some tips that will keep you safe, especially when handling your electronic devices. Firstly, the coronavirus or COVID-19 and other common cold and flus are spread through droplets from coughing and sneezing. So basically, hygiene practices are recommended. Number one, cover your cough or sneezes. Number two, wash your hands regularly with soap and water. If there is no soap and water, you can use hand sanitizers. Number three, keep your distance from others so you don't sneeze or cough on them. And number four, try not to touch your face because it is through your nose and mouth that the coronavirus enters the body. Hence, washing of hands is important. Keeping those in mind, we sometimes forget that we would have coughed or sneezed while using our phones or our gaming console. As such, germs and viruses can transfer to the next person who uses them. So here are some quick tips to sanitize your phone and other electronic devices. Isopropyl alcohol is colorless and comes with a strong odor. It is fantastic for killing germs and viruses. When you're looking for isopropyl in your local pharmacy, make sure the alcohol level content is at 70% or less. Anything more than that may damage the outer covering of your electronic devices. Now, how to sanitize your phone? Well, it's quite simple. Number one, turn off your phone. If your phone has a removable battery, remove it. Number two, dab a soft cloth or a cotton pad in the alcohol solution. Number three, wipe down your phone especially the screen and other surfaces that touches your face. If you don't have isopropyl alcohol, you may use disinfectant wipes. If you do not have either of these, you can go back to basics, soap and water. Now, for soap and water, number one, fill a small bowl of warm water and add soap. Number two, dab a soft cloth or cotton pad into the mixture. Number three, squeeze out the excess water soap solution. And number four, wipe down your phone or electronic devices. Always keep in mind when using the water and soap option, the cloth has to be damp. We do not want excess water seeping into your devices. And finally, your play and work area needs to be wiped down with any disinfectant. And that can be something simple as Dettol mixed with water or a mixture of bleach and water will always do the trick. Well, that brings us to the end of Tech People. Now you know some ways to keep your phone and electronic devices clean and ways to stop germs from spreading. And remember, always wash your hands, cover your cough and sneezes, and keep your hands away from your face. This is Q for Tech People. See you next time. And that was the technology news on coronavirus, on tech people. Thanks, Quinton, for that. Well, this brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining me. Please join me next time for another exciting episode on House and Home. On behalf of the entire House and Home team, pleasant viewing. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye.